Nice. Back at it with the Barbie Monster Camper. We're gonna put in a seat from a Honda Odyssey, not the minivan, and power steering. We've got an electric power steering set up for um, just adding it into an ATV. I think this is for like a Polaris UTV or whatever. But it's a 220 watt electric power steering setup like we have in Colonel Senders. Um, it's got a little computer, self-contained. You basically just need power and ground. And then it's got a torque sensor. If you turn this, senses the input, gives you more power on the other end. So that'll make this thing steering minty fresh. I was peeling back the front of the cover here to try and, because I want to trim the front a little bit to make it fit around some things. It just needs to move forward a tiny bit into where it's sitting, so that's the plan. You can see I just kind of cut the front off and then like pulled this over and stapled it back on. That's of course somewhat temporary. We'll eventually get it reupholstered, but that allows it to go forward enough into these bars to clear the shock towers back here and to clear, of course, where the body is and give us a very nice, the most comfortable power wheel seat ever. So now I'm gonna work on the steering, um, get the power steering unit mounted, um, figure out where the steering wheel is gonna go, do all that stuff, and then come back to mounting the seat once we're, you know, getting going on that. Now that we have uh, CNC capabilities, I've gotten uh, nerdy and downloaded a CAD program. And uh, it's my first time doing CAD and it's a lot of fun. Last night after I was done working out in the shop, I brought in the power steering unit for the Barbie camper. I, uh, you know, took some measurements, drew up a bolt pattern, and then I measured how far away it is from the nearest round tube, drew all this up. And then this is a brace that'll brace it in the opposite direction, be welded on there. You just have to throw it on a flash drive, take it out to the arc droid, and cut some sparks. Obviously had to, you know, clean up the holes a little bit, but I think that is a very nice looking bracket. And uh, I've made some that look decent by hand, but this took so much less time. And the bolts even. Why not? We have that now, and that just goes, this goes right into there with its little set bolt. I'm going to about the only point of frame that I know exists currently, which is that. Hey, look at that. It worked. Photographers can math too. <laughs> Bada boom, look at that. Yeah. That's perfect. That just goes there to brace it the other direction. Nice. And now it's strong this way, which is the most important way because that's the way the torque is applied. Uh -huh. And then it's also strong in this way because, you know, it needs to be sturdy in both directions. <laughs> This is obviously a giant hunk of solid. And with the lathe, I turned it into these two chunks here. This one already has the bearing pressed into it, but uh, those hold the bearings for the steering column. So fresh off the lathe parts. Time to, uh, as you put it, show off my shaft. <laughs> so this is the steering shaft where the uh, steering wheel goes. Got a uh, adapter here that goes on that. And this is my bearing holder, part of the uh, assembly. And then this obviously is not cut to length yet, but that goes in there. will be press fit into the end of that. 
welded. And then we have another set for the other end. So we've got the uh, steering shaft all assembled here. We've got our uh, little, uh, what do you want to call it? A, a dog bone, a dumbbell, dumbbell steering thing. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's all looking pretty. And uh, this, I'm still not sure exactly, you know, I might cut it down a little more and then there's a little bit of adjustment in here. Um, but yeah, that's all gonna go something about like that. And then we can just bolt a steering wheel to this. I'll probably end up making a steering wheel, but we have one for now that we can test fit just so I can actually have something to hold on to. I think it's time to uh, make a couple of seat mounts so I can sit in this and actually lean back and feel where the steering wheel needs to be. And then uh, we'll be like really close to functional steering. And I think this turned out really awesome. This steering adapter thing, um, it's just a generic one for this steering column for whatever steering wheel and it's like, really beefy and overkill, but with the size of this, it actually looks really cool. It's like, I don't know, just a, a nice, nice size, nice scale. Got the seat mounted. So I just made some of my uh, standard tube end mount things with just like a big washer welded on there and then a bolt straight through into the seat. And then of course, a piece of tubing notched back to the chassis and tacked in place. Um, so that's the front half. And then um, I may also end up adding uh, other stuff onto the outside of this for the roll cage or body mounts or whatever. So, you know, convenient spot to add more tubing and super easy, just unfold the seat. Uh, I think this is gonna be pretty good. I, uh, I might wanna try and get it a little bit farther forward. It's a little bit cramped right now, but uh, you know, as I learned in driver's ed, optimal steering distance is when you can put your hand out and your wrist sits on top of the steering wheel. So, <laughs> you know, that's totally important for power wheels. Yeah, obviously this isn't the permanent steering wheel, but um, regardless, I think this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be good. It'll be really nice to have like a, well, a padded seat for one, but also one that's got support like all the way up to your neck so you can really like brace into it and you know, and all of that. So now I just gotta make some supports for this. Um, because this side of the frame has to be removable, if it's supported from that side, that will also have to be removable. Um, so we'll see. I might, like I did on Colonel Senders, I actually just made a, a bracket that came up from only one side and then kind of braced it with like a little tiny removable one on the other, so. That is more like it. Oh yeah. Now we're, uh, now we're partying in a Barbie camper. We're Barbie, Barbie camping. I like that this just folds out here. You can just cruise with your arm out the window, out the back window, you just, you know, it's like a limo, except that you drive. You sit in the back seat, but you drive from there. <laughs> and then the uh, the passengers right up front, it's a reverse limo. Oh yeah, I'm kind of worried to check the PO box. Oh, I know, <laughs> it's gonna be bad. Yeah, you can totally, oh, that's oh, what those are. Yes. <laughs> that's the chill mode driving, just uh. And we don't have to shift, you could actually do it. Oh, for sure. And I, like, there's a rear brake that's gonna be with your foot, but I'll probably also have a handbrake on the steering wheel, so you could totally just chill here, or you can stick your feet out the doors. You got all kinds of, this one, that's a little off. Um, but yeah, just, uh, you know, just chilling. As we get closer to having functional steering, uh, I'm about to mount this, but first, I, I wanna be able to actually test it, and this is mounted, but not very rigidly. Um, this mount provides a lot of stiffness in terms of rotation, but without a second, uh, you know, a second mount point, it's wobbly this way. I'm gonna make a little tiny bracket that bolts to the side of the engine here. Using these two bolt holes here, which are just plug holes that, that plug up a, you know, a casting hole in the engine. So um, they're a pretty beefy little plug. So I'll just use those 
to uh, make a little bracket that bolts to the engine head and then also bolts on using one of the bolts here. So it's a little tiny, teeny removable bracket uh, that adds some stiffness to this. And uh, I suppose as a bonus, adds a tiny bit of rigidity to the engine and the whole frame as well. So uh, yeah, we'll knock that bracket out real quick so that this is stiff enough. So here's the finished bracket. It is uh, very satisfyingly light and small. It weighs, I don't know, nothing, uh, a few grams. <laughs> and these two bolts go through it nice and strong. And because it's so small, it's even stronger because it doesn't have to span a large distance. So I'll throw it back in there and then, uh, then the steering will be nice and rigid. And uh, then I can mount this and have complete steering. So got that bracket in there and the uh, steering unit is a, a little more sturdy. So time to mount the steering wheel. Um, and I think it's gonna go somewhere right about there. It's a little cramped for taller people, but it works for me. And uh, it's about the best we can do because the farther we move it this, this way, this gets shorter, which makes these two U-joint uh, angles too, more extreme, and then it also runs into where the air filter needs to be. So uh, basically I'm just gonna do a tube up to here on this side, and then a tube down on this side. Um, and then I'll just, uh, on this side, I'll have to make another one of my uh, frame decoupler things um, because this side will still have to come out. So uh, gives me an excuse to use the shiny new mill. I got half of my steering column support tacked on here, and uh, I think this is gonna be perfect, this location. Um, I just eyeballed it to center, and as far as I can tell, it's perfect as far as that as well. And uh, it just feels good. It's comfortable, and even if your legs are like, you know, up high like this, if your knees are high, they, there's just, it, there's so much, it may look cramped, but compared to all the other power wheels, it's just, so spacious and in case you're wondering why it stops right now it's just this little uh this little adjustable spline part the little end there is sticking in too far so it runs into that so i'll just cut that off and then we'll be in business we, are, we have a rear brake here with your foot it's already basically perfect and we don't need a clutch because it doesn't have one so all we need is a thumb throttle and maybe a hand brake but we could also do one foot brake on either side and then all you'd have for hand controls is just the thumb throttle which could be really nice. It's just gonna be, it's just gonna be so good. And you never know, maybe it will be the most powerful eventually with, you know. <laughs> There's things some you things could do. that could be added to it. <laughs> some things. Uh, <laughs> you never know. It's good, I like this position. And it's kind of in the way of the air filter here, but that's only if you just put a pod filter directly on this. And uh, I think the obvious answer is that this thing needs a snorkel. So we can just run some piping up to a snorkel up here. And then this has plenty of space to clear some piping. Time to make the other half of my steering thing, which means more tube couplers. Um, this is a piece of one inch uh, round stock that I already put in the mill and messed around with for a couple minutes. So I'm gonna put that back in there and uh, put our mill to work and make, make some more frame couplers. And this time they'll be more precise by a lot and uh, you know, just generally easier to make. I've been dreaming about having a mill for years and we finally have one. Um, so I just put the largest um, cutter end mill that we have in there. Uh, obviously we don't have a large selection yet because we just got it, obviously completely manual. Um, but that's good because I don't really know how to run a mill. so having it run itself would uh, probably just mean I would break stuff faster. The super filthy pink grind hard koozie is awesome. Yup. Magnetic, I think we still have a few for sale. Not pink though, those are out of pink. Quick. Oh, <laughs> what a shame. Oh, that part's wow. not, uh, it must be cast aluminum or something. Anyway, uh, power that bad boy on.
so satisfying. Precision. And then there's a, uh, a few ways to um, lower it, or raise it, rather. Yummy. Dang, it just goes right through. Yeah, so this is a uh, carbide cutter that I just ordered to, uh, you know, be able to do this kind of stuff more uh, more quickly. In a Take little... off more material. Yeah. With a regular just tool steel cutter, it would just wear out faster. infinite steering here just steer forever uh, yeah so final step before we can test this is weld this but um, yesterday I got this piece done with my uh, fresh shiny tube coupler made on the mill so uh, it's extra extra perfect um, and it works it's nice and sturdy um, I'll probably add some more reinforcement kind of down this way or something later, but I'll wait because it's plenty strong for now and there'll be so much other stuff going on. I'll probably want some attachment, but this, uh, this face here, I could put a big piece of uh, aluminum or steel, thin steel, and we can use this for switches and gauges and stuff. We might want some gauges in the actual plastic dash as well, but right here, if we need like, you know, the key and some switches and stuff, that'll be perfect. So, yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. Weld this up real quick, throw a battery in there, and test out this here power steering. What's entertaining is I can just sit in the seat, use the foot pedal down here, and not only that, but I can steer the steering wheel to, uh, to, you know, spin this while I weld it. So that's, uh, a win-win. It's a unique situation. <laughs> yeah, also it's chilly today, so my welding helmet's gonna fog up. All hooked up obviously the uh, power steering uh, unit needs a little more support still um, I think I went a little bit too hard on the weight reduction aspect of building this bracket um, which is no surprise I was just excited about CAD and made it really thin so anyway I need to <laughs> I need to make that a little bit stiffer but um, so this is with no power steering it's a little stiff but like a hundred times better than the kernel was at this point That looks simple. Power steering is good. You can actually see the whole frame like jiggling around here when I steer it. It wouldn't be grind hard if we didn't test things way before they were ready to be tested. Absolutely <laughs> right. It would not be grind hard. So <laughs> this is with power steering. So let's see, I'll just do a two finger here. Wow. Without power steering. <laughs> like, okay, so yeah, here, here we go. Two fingers, top of the steering wheel. <laughs> Can I can't me? do anything with two fingers because I don't have that much grip strength. Now, power steering back on. Ooh. A few zip ties 
to hold all these wires and stuff in place, and more importantly, the battery and power steering computer. And then, uh, then maybe we roll it down the medium hill, not the giant one yet. I love these air shocks. I mean, first of all, because they're just amazingly beautiful and just good in every way. But the best part is I had them pumped up so that this thing would sit at a tall ride height for like test fitting things. And I was like, that's kind of stiff uh, for, you know, test rolling it down the hill without all the weight on it. So I just unscrewed the cap, let a little bit of air out manually, and now it's super mega cushy. Nice. So I've also decided that we're just gonna go ahead, go for it and roll it down the big hill because uh, <laughs> Good call. why not? This is a rare occurrence, but if you're watching this video on the day that it was released, today is actually today. Like we're filming this right now and uh, Edwin's gonna go into back to his house where there's internet and upload it this afternoon, which is why this video is late because right now it's like 11.30 and we normally post at noon. <laughs> uh, and we have other videos that are, you know, uh, already filmed, but we're too excited about this and wanted to keep going on this series. We don't always keep track of the days of the week, so, <laughs> My <bad>. you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always feel bad when we post late because we get messages every time, like, I've been staying up all night, I live in Australia, and I wanted to see the new video. So we've been trying to get them out right at noon, and we've been doing a pretty good job of it, but. Yeah, this week was not that week. Sorry about that, guys. Man, I know that we cheated with this build because we started with a completely working vehicle. But like, episode three, not just episode, but like week three of working on this and not even full weeks because chaos. Uh, and not only do we already have a rolling chassis with steering and suspension, we even have brakes <laughs> that are functional. This is the first time you've rolled something down this hill with brakes. <laughs> yeah, it might be. Generally, we just have no brakes at all. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. I'll uh, wheelchair myself around with these tires. Here we go. Nice. Yeah, felt good. Um, the suspension's a little chattery because uh, right now the whole thing is very light and those tires are very heavy. We got a lot of unsprung weight, but even still, it felt really good. Uh, the seating position's comfortable, the steering's good. Um, it'll be really nice to have a harness where you can be like held into the seat um, because, I mean, already the seat's super comfy, but it's also a very upright position, so you don't have like a lot of like lean back, stay in your seat uh, without the harness, but that's why we have a harness. I'd say that's a uh, solid win for this week. Should we tow it up with the Tesla? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else we tow it with. But, uh, <laughs> you tow it with my van, but the Tesla is easier because it's got a backup camera, so. <laughs> it's the obvious choice. The Tesla is just so cool and so easy. It's our new workhorse. <laughs> yeah, and we were joking about wondering why the heck Rich Rebuild put this winch on the back of it before he shipped it back to us. Uh, but you know, it's actually super convenient. It's we awesome. We don't have to worry about the tow strap. We just grab <laughs> this and... Go for it. Bada boom. This is another awesome thing about the Tesla. You can see the backup camera when you're going forward. It couldn't be a better vehicle for this. And it has all of the torque for going up the hills. <laughs> it's just too good. Look at that. Yes. Oh yeah, we're going up the steep hill. Or not. This thing is unbeatable. <laughs> Maybe not the best idea. <laughs> Forgot how wet it is today. <laughs> yeah, and you know, towing an extra, I don't know, 700 pounds of thing. <laughs> Look at that Tesla go off-roading. You just 
have this switch in the trunk. <laughs> easy peasy. Nice cheap peasant. <laughs> Yes. Bada boom. Bada boom. Done. Tesla really makes a nice tow rig. <laughs> sure does. At least short distances. In the last episode, we talked about how these seats here are made for Barbies. Um, and in this episode, we found out they also double as footrests. But um, we have some packages from our P.O. box. We don't know what's in them, but likely barbies because we talked about that last time this one's from donald so <laughs> thanks donald <laughs> we'll see we'll see what's oh yep there we go oh my god it's a barbie racing suit no way donald's a smart man well oh this one's a paramedic barbie Perfect. that's appropriate <laughs> man i never thought i'd see the day that i'm an adult man i'm almost 31 years old and i'm opening up Barbies that were sent to us in the mail by people we've never met. <laughs> really not how I expected my life to turn out. And but we're excited about it. <laughs> it's yeah, it's a really uh it's a good it's a good uh good place to be. Oh wait a minute. Wait till you're you're gonna love this one. Okay, this is this is next level. Next level? Yeah. It's a Barbie in a Jeep. No. Barbie and Ken in their own Jeep. Yeah. Actually, that's an FJ Cruiser. That's even better than a Jeep. <laughs> so uh, cool. A gift for you. Here's a Barbie and Ken to ride along with you in the Barbie Dream Camper. Also, keep up the amazing plumbing vids. Grind hard from Manny D. Thanks, Manny D. Thank you. This is, uh, this is perfect. What we need to do is just put it on the roof rack. Yes, trap it to the roof. Yep. <laughs> Jeez, that's really, like, really Hand packaged. into her brain. Yeah, that's <laughs> awkward. <laughs> I don't know if these seat belts are quite gonna cut it. I feel like Barbie's gonna yeet right on out of there. Barbie needs to gain a little weight, be a little more realistic here so she can be strapped <laughs> in securely. It's so funny, when I picked up the P.O. box, my wife got so excited. She was like, can I open them? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Barbie co-pilot here. We've probably just like zip tired of the steering wheel forever. The steering came together really nicely. Um, I do need to make some reinforcements. I also realized that part of why it's not that rigid is that the reinforcement I made is attached to the engine, which both of the engine mount bolts are completely loose. So the engine is actually just wobbling back and forth instead of stiffening the steering. Our next episode, we'll keep working on this. Um, I'll probably start building the cage. It's about that time, um, cage and new shock mounts. Basically, I'm gonna make a big X that comes up and around for the back of the roll cage, and then the shocks will mount to that instead of these crappy little mounts that they're on now. Um, kind of the same thing with the front. Yeah, this thing's just cruising right along, and it's turning out awesome. And now we have Barbies to ride with us, so thanks for that. <laughs> I've been playing with CAD and the Arc Droid here, and I came up with this. Still needs a little refining, but this is a prototype for uh, a new product that we'll have next time we uh, drop some new merch. Uh, there'll be very limited numbers because I'm gonna be making each and every one of them. Uh, but it's a little bottle opener, keychain with a 10 mil wrench on the end um, because everyone loses 10 mils. So uh, that's pretty cool. And the Indiegogo for ArcDroid is super live right now, so there's a link for that in the description if you want to go check that out. Um, save some money. Save some money. Use and our link. <laughs> yep, exactly. Save some cash, get yourself an ArcDroid, and make yourself some bottle openers. Unlimited supply. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to do this. We're going to do all sorts of stuff like this. I'll just keep designing weird little gadgets and tools and stuff that are small and can be cut out with the ArcDroid. You can see here I've been cutting out a bunch of different tests of this and messing around with it.
So, oh, they look they look really cool in the stack. I'll show that. That's pretty pretty sweet. New merch drop with the Banshee giveaway coming soon. Coming soon with grind hard bottle openers, rust included. <laughs> we might get some stainless steel eventually, but the first round will just be mild steel, which I think is much more appropriate anyway because we have lots of rusty steel. And uh, it's not exactly, need, doesn't need to be food grade because it's a bottle opener. You're not sticking it in your beverage. You're just popping the cap off, so. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. 